Luke Kirby stars in the fourth season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Luke, I want to start where the season ends because the season finale for Lenny Bruce is such an incredible episode. Um, and you have a few scenes in that episode that I think are amongst you know the best work you've done on the series. So I want to start with that Carnegie Hall set. Um, and for folks that don't know, you know, Lenny Bruce actually performed at Carnegie Hall in February of 1961. And the series and you really recreate that, that performance, um, you know, the material and, and the setting. So I just wanted to ask you, did you study that recording when you were preparing for this? Or do you know Lenny so well now that you've been doing it for, for a few seasons that it's just kind of instinctual? Um, <clears throat> I uh, had I bought that album in the summer of uh, 2003 on my first visit to Los Angeles. Uh, a friend introduced me to Amoeba Records, and I uh, found a copy of uh, it was a CD of Lenny's Carnegie Hall, and I just drove around um, LA uh, slowly, um, realizing that I wasn't going to get any work that summer. And listened to that album kind of obsessively, I guess. So I had kind of familiarized myself with it, you know, in another lifetime. Um, and definitely had kind of uh, revisited it through uh, the, uh, you know, Maisel experiment. Um, you know, especially because one of um, Lenny's bits. Um, that he did is uh, did uh, called uh, Christ and Moses. Uh, he did at Carnegie Hall, so I listened to that quite a lot. Um, and yeah, it's I mean, it's a really fantastic live performance to get into. Yeah, and you actually shot this at Carnegie Hall, um, which was a huge occasion for Lenny. And I have to imagine too to be playing Lenny on the actual stage at Carnegie Hall is is just incredible. So. As an actor and just as a as a human and, and Lenny admirer, what is it like to to stand on that stage and and recreate Lenny's legendary set? Um, I, you know, I went into it with a kind of you know your your typical sort of um, uh, you know faux cavalier mentality. I sort of was like, well, what's the big deal? You know, Carnegie Hall. Who cares? I never wanted to get to Carnegie Hall you know, um, and then, you know, quite quickly walked into that space and sort of felt the heft of it and the history of it. Uh, you know, there was a touch of poetry added to it also that, you know, we had all been sort of living um, away from theaters and performance spaces for such a long time. And so it was kind of our first time gathering in a space like that. I know it was the first, you know, us going in there was the first time anyone had been on the stage, you know, since COVID. So that all kind of felt special. Um, and then once the words came out and, you know, the acoustics kind of bounced back, it, then, then it sort of, you know, punched me in the nose um, that I was in, you know, sharing sharing that space with obviously all the incredible performances that have taken place there, but also with, you know, that Lenny Bruce's lungs passed through that space was really, uh, kind of re really rocked me for a moment. Um, but more than anything, just felt like, you know, a, a great charm, uh, you know, to get to, you know, dip my toe into that world. Yeah, I can only imagine. Uh, and we do get to see a fair number of sections of that set. I mean, it's a, it's a full set, you know, that, that yeah. Lenny performed. So we see a fair amount of it, but I was just wondering, did you shoot any other pieces that we didn't see or were, did uh, the Paladinos pick these segments in particular? I, I feel like there's something that was in there that is not in the episode, but I can't honestly remember. I know that uh, it felt like a lot of uh, stuff to uh, prepare and I felt really overwhelmed and of course scared and all that stuff. But uh, I don't know what it was. You'll have to you know, wait for the um, DVD 
<laughs> special features to come out when Amazon starts selling DVDs on the street. Uh, so I want to ask you about the other scenes you do on that stage, because we have the yeah. tre tremendous performance, but then Lenny grabs Midge after the, the show and takes her to that stage because she really needs to have kind of a realization or Lenny, Lenny feels like she you know, needs to wake up. So just wanted to ask you, you know, why do you think it at this moment, Lenny is the only one, the best messenger, the only one that can really get through to Midge because she's been stuck kind of all season hiding as Lenny says. So why is it, you know, why is it Lenny that is the one to deliver that message? Well, I think he has, um, you know, the virtue of their relationship, I guess, is that it, they're new to each other and they're not tied into any, um, any kind of degrees of responsibility that come with more serious human relationships, which, you know, are really uh, good to have, but also come with the trappings of habit and expectation of people's character. So, you know, a family member can't really, you know, kick you into gear because of their affection for who you are and who they think you are and who they remember you to be, you know. Lenny doesn't have any of those trappings with Midge and so can kind of see where she's going and want to pull her in that direction versus sort of, you know, the challenge that Midge has to face is that, you know, she set herself up as this perfect person, turned out to not be really her truth, then discovered this talent that she has and is now kind of conflicted with, you know, all the challenges that come with trying to embrace that talent. Lenny sees that, I think, in its more pure form. And so, you know, has the advantage that he can kind of just kind of try to awaken her to that. Um, that would be my, my guess as to why he's probably the best person. He also has, you know, the, uh, the long road behind him of experience, which, you know, helps. Yeah, yeah. On that too, I just want your thoughts as uh, as an actor who gets to watch Rachel do some of these sets. Um, what is it about Midge's comedy? You know, you can answer as Lenny, or you know, just as yourself. What do you think it is about Midge's comedy that Lenny sees and is so passionate about? Because the the kind of last lines of that scene are just how heartbroken he would be if if she screws up her opportunity. So what is it about yeah. her humor that, that you think really kind of is unique and, and special? Well, I think it's the thing, you know, the thing that people talk about Lenny Bruce a lot, the one of the words that comes up a lot is truth. And truth is a really complicated word for sure. We all know that as soon as you say it, you're um, already digging your own grave. But <clears throat> I do think that Lenny sees uh, in Midge a person exploring their truth and we also know that midge for a long time was exploring the lie of what life should be you know that of you know she should be the perfect this and the perfect that and she should do this and that but she's opted out and i think more than kind of just a, an idea of midge abandoning the great potential of a fantastic career if she sort of gets too caught up in her plan and perfecting an image of herself, she'll lose out on the exploration of the kind of muddier, dirtier exploration of finding her truth, the truer self that she is. So I, I, I sort of feel like that's what Lenny sees in her. He sees something growing um, that is kind of <clears throat> full of dimension uh, and contradiction and, you know, there's something about that that I think Lenny finds, you know, beautiful. Um, you know, I think that's got to be what it is. Yeah, I think you're, you're really right on that because she sets out at the beginning of the season to try to do things her way and by, on her terms. Right. But it, it's interesting that, you know, in trying to do that, she loses out on some of the spontaneity of, of just finding the humor in, in life, which is what she's been doing. So I think that's, you know, that's very, eye, it's very eye-opening for me to hear. I think you're, you're spot on. Yeah, you know, Lenny Bruce, had, he said, 
it's it's not the easiest thing to kind of get in the moment but he said the truth is what is and what should be is a lie and, and that's sort of i i love that it's a weird kind of mantra but i love it and i think about it a lot and i kind of feel like that's plays out a little bit when he tells midge not to plan you know um that in kind of in planning she'll find herself inside of the what should be of life instead of you know what work provides which is the becoming sort of to be in a, in a state of becoming anyway that's right. as high minded as i'll get no that's great um i want to ask you too about working with rachel on the other kind of big things that happen in in the finale which is lenny and midge uh sleep together for the first time yeah. so after that kind of that wonderful episode in season three where they spend a lot of time together and then you know there's a close encounter but but they don't um they don't go into Lenny's room together um were you worried the two of you or you you know as actors to finally bring that relationship there after so much time of you know should they or will they to finally to cross that line um you know what were your thoughts when you saw that it was happening in the script I mean I from the beginning of this endeavor, I, I, I've always really just entrusted Amy and Dan to kind of know what they're doing. Um, for a, a number of reasons, one, because that's the only option that I really have in this situation, <laughs> but also kind of, you know, when, when you have writing as good as you have on this show and you have sort of every department giving you their very best, you really have the privilege of getting to kind of leap into faith and just trust it. So I, I really didn't have any kind of gripe or grumble about them doing it. And in fact, it's, it's everything, every step of Midge and Lenny's relationship has felt to me authentic and has kind of felt like it's in the realm of the meant to be. Um, you know, I think, Part of that has got to be because of it, you know, the infrequency of their happenings together. But um, but I was I was really pleased with it. I mean, the scene was so uh, the scene kind of leading up to that, you know, it's it's invested in all the things that we love about these two people: the fun, their sensitivities, uh, their sharp, uh, you know, brains, their wit, their sexiness, their hunger and appetite. You know that. It, it felt like they were touching on all the, the right aspects of who they are as individuals and, and what it is that they, you know, they like about each other. You know, everyone's got different magnets in their pocket and for whatever reason, there's seem to be drawn to each other. So, yeah, know, it felt felt good. Yeah, I mean, it, it is it is really well done and kind of beautifully realized. And of course, it's such a nice scene followed by you know, the kind of fear for Midge that, you know, she sees, you know, some of the signs of Lenny's addiction. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, people who know Lenny, of course, know, you know, where his, his story goes. But in the universe, it's kind of, you know, surprising for Midge. So I was just wondering, you know, the series is coming back for a fifth and final season. Are you hoping that they grapple with that more, you know, if, if and when Lenny comes back? Um, cause it, you know, they've dabbled with it, but, um, you know, it's obviously a big part of his, of his life story. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't really know where it's going to go. Um, just cause it's, again, it's one of those things that's out of my hands and I'll just wait until they ring my bell. Uh, but I, I feel like they've, they've kind of dealt with that sort of so deftly and, and and in many ways it's been you know as important as it is to touch upon that part of his life I think it's also been really nice to see you know Lenny Bruce as a man Lenny Bruce exploring himself as an entertainer his you know the kind of because there's the kind of, there's the mythology of what happened to him in, in the courtrooms and you know what so many institutions um, either consciously or not did to suppress his voice and really you know really break his fucking heart 
um, you know, that's been touched upon sort of so much in, in other, other places. And so I, in some ways I feel like it's just as powerful to tell the story of, you know, a person who, as Lenny said, you know, the reason he did this is because it was fun, you know. Um, he says in an interview with Nat Hentoff that he does it because it's nice to tell a poem in front of people, you know, and, and that's the kind of, that's the gist of it. Um, so, so long as we're sort of still endeavoring and exploring this, uh, this man who loves life, I think that we'll be fine. Yeah, I, I love the fullness of, of the character and the way he's been explored across the seasons. And one thing that yeah. we see this season, you know, which we really haven't seen maybe in the others is Lenny entering, fully entering Midge's kind of Upper West Side family world for the first yeah. time. There's that great um, opening to the episode where Lenny wakes up in, in Midge's apartment uh, and meets the family and, and is kind of, you know, dazed at, at what's happening. Uh, so I wanted to ask you just how fun is it to play with, you know, you get to work with Tony again and play with Marin and just to kind of enter that other kind of world of Mrs. Maisel that Lenny is not often in was so fun for the audience to see. Yeah, it was very exciting for me too. I mean, you know, I'm so fond of everyone in the cast and have, you know, been a long time, uh, you know, fan doesn't do justice, you know, what I feel about Tony and, and Marin. So, um, yeah, it's just was, it was a, a very, uh, another very lucky day on the set of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And, you know, happy to see him kind of cross the border into that, in, you know, into that realm of Midge's reality. Um, and also happy that he escaped, you know, as swiftly as he did. Yeah, um, you mentioned earlier, you don't really know where the story is going, uh, but before I let you go, I have to just ask you, you know, do you have any teasers for the fifth season? Uh, have you seen any scripts? Do you know anything about, you know, where your character is going? Um, because we only get one more, we get one more season and, and glimpse at, at Lenny Bruce. Yeah, I mean, I would tell you, but there's a there's a black van with tinted windows outside of my space <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you see, a, is there a red laser on my forehead right now? Not that I can see. Okay. I don't know uh, really what, I don't know that I could, could tease anything from you. I mean, what could I say? Well, Tune I guess I, I don't know what I guess we'll you. have to be we'll have to be patient, uh, and that's a tease because I guess the less we know, the more excited we'll be. Um, but Luke Kirby, congratulations on the fourth season of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and thanks so much for talking to Gold Ruby today. Yeah, thank you, David. I appreciate it. Good to see you.